Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show where this week we take a look at the best looking hatchback on the market, the Mazda 3. We also have a crossover from Kia and an all new EV from BMW, the iX3. And in this week's Deep Drive, we review the new Ford Puma. That's all coming up, but first. Land Rover has revealed a new Defender. No, not that one, a new old one. Yes, we're confused too, but Land Rover has decided to build a handful of Defender 90 and 110 Works V8 trophies, presumably using some parts they had left over at the factory. Something of an homage to the old Camel Trophy Land Rovers of the 80s and 90s, the Defender Trophy gets some sand glow yellow paint, a plethora of off-road goodies and a 399 brake horsepower 5-litre V8. Buyers will be invited to drive the cars at the brand's off-road test facility in Herefordshire, but not before they've handed over an eye-watering £195,000 base price. Kia loves SUVs and crossovers. It currently offers the Nero, the Stonic, the Soul, the Sportage and the Sorento, while over in North America it also sells the massive Telluride. Clearly then, what the South Korean brand really needs is another one. And here it is, the XC. As the name would suggest, this isn't a proper SUV. Instead, it's a stylish little crossover based on the popular seed family hatch. It may seem then that this is just another hatchback with taller suspension. However, while it may share a platform with the seed, the only body panels the two cars share are the front doors. Everything else is bespoke, giving it an identity of its own. In typical Kia fashion, there aren't many equipment options to choose from. Instead, there are numerous different trim levels, each with their own features to suit a range of budgets. Speaking of budget though, the Exceed is quite pricey, with like-for-like -like models ending up around a thousand pounds more expensive than equivalent seed hatchbacks. The taller suspension does mean it's a decent long-distance cruiser. There are a couple of diesel options to choose from, but we'd recommend the 1.4-litre petrol with its 62 miles per hour in a shade over nine seconds. It's not an exciting engine, but it's smooth and quiet and much pokier than the diesels. It remains to be seen if the Exceed will take off. We'd rather save some cash and get a regular seat, but no doubt the rugged looks and elevated seating position will win over plenty of buyers. And now an Auto Mundial deep drive as we check out the all new Ford Puma. So far as small SUVs go, Ford had been on the back foot searching for its smash hit, the EcoSport, which was their first attempt, failed to win any awards or sell nearly as many as the Nissan Juke or the Renault Captur. It was boxy, it didn't drive very well to say the least. So, is the new Ford Puma the crossover that Ford should have launched this whole time? And compared to the boxy EcoSport, this is more distinctive and the looks evoke strong opinions. The Puma is unmistakable when you see it on the road, thanks to its large grille and perched headlights, which can look a bit froggy in photos, but seems to work well in the real world. Large wheel arches and 17 and 18 inch alloy wheels give it a stocky planted stance. And despite being fairly tall, the Puma has a coupe style roof line that's the opposite to the EcoSport. It's a sporty take on the small SUV formula that's keen to give the impression that it will handle just as well as a hatchback, but it's slightly less functional as a result. There aren't any built-in roof rails, for instance. 
And the ST line and Vignali trims get painted wheel arches that are more likely to pick up scratches and stone chips rather than a black plastic. SUV buyers love gadgets, so Ford launched the Puma without any basic trim levels to start with. Instead, there are titanium ST-Line and ST-Line X trims, which have now been joined by this car, the range-topping ST-Line X Vignali. So, for now, every car gets the 8-inch infotainment screen, a heated windscreen that gets you on the road more quickly on cold mornings, rear parking sensors and wireless phone charging. Ford ST-Line trims are similar to the FR and R-Line trims of rivals, giving the Puma a sporty look and a stiffer suspension. It also gets this crisp digital instrument panel, hugging seats, leather trim for the gear lever and steering wheel, and dark headlining. ST-Line X sees leather extend onto the seats and adds climate control and a B&O sound system. Vignali signifies that this is the most luxurious Puma with opulent features like a heated steering wheel and unique grille and chrome trim. Of course, it also pumps up the price, which wouldn't make it our recommendation. Instead, we would pick the titanium or the ST line for the best value for money. After the break, a Mazda family hatchback and BMW's new electric SUV. Coming up, Mazda's answer to the VW Golf and BMW's new EV. First though, part two of our Ford Puma Deep Drive. Two versions of the 1 litre petrol are available with 124 and 153 brake horsepower. That takes 9.8 and 8.9 seconds apiece to do 0 to 62 mile an hour. As standard, the Puma comes fixed with a six speed manual gearbox, but there's also the option of the seven speed automatic in this car. Both versions of the engine are available with a mild hybrid technology, which harvests energy as the car slows down and stores it in a small battery. This can then be used to power the car's electronics and even give the engine a small boost as you accelerate, helping to save fuel in the process. That's not this clever engine's only trick. 
because it can also shut down one of the cylinders when you don't need full power. The lower powered engine can manage economy of up to 51.4 miles per gallon, while the top version is only slightly less economical, managing up to 48.7 miles per gallon. These figures are slightly better than the Duke can manage, but not far off the diesel rivals. Speaking of which, a diesel is likely to join the range later in the year, followed by a high-performance Puma ST, an entry-level petrol with less power. When we first heard that Ford were launching the Puma SUV, we hoped it would right the wrongs of the EcoSport and give Ford the small SUV it so badly needed. And thankfully, I think it's done the job. And judging by the wait list to get one, you seem to think the same. On next week's Deep Drive, we look at the stylish Mercedes CLA. The Master 3 has always seemed like somewhat of a left field choice in the family hatchback class. The Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra and Volkswagen Golf have always been the go-to choices while the Master has always remained a support act to Europe's headliners. That could all be about to change, though, with this, the new Mazda 3. Is it the best-looking hatchback of the last decade? We certainly think so. The design has been clearly influenced by the stunning Kai concept car of 2017 with a squat stance and sporty look. Next to this, even the curvy Ford Focus looks positively bland. It's a similar story inside too, with a smart, minimalist cabin following the current trend for horizontal dashboard architecture. It's functional as well, with a pleasing array of buttons and dials in place of increasingly common touchscreen controls. This is 2021 though, so of course the 3 gets a swanky infotainment system. It's operated by a rotary click wheel on the centre console, meaning it's easy to use on the move and far less distracting than some of the bigger screens now on offer. The menus are easy to understand and the graphics are crisp and bright. The seats themselves are wonderful too, with plenty of support and some very nice leather on higher trim levels. In fact, the quality of materials is exemplary throughout the range, especially for an affordable family hatch. Cram yourself into the back though, and it is a different story altogether. That low roof line may look cool, but it does hamper headroom for those unfortunate enough to find themselves squeezed in the back seats. There isn't much legroom either, and the massive C pillars limit the size of the rear windows. There is a saloon version available, which is a bit more conventional, but it's the hatchback that will most likely be the big seller. Perhaps then it isn't the best family car in this class, but can it make up for it on the open road? Well, unlike a Golf or a Focus, buyers are limited to only three engines, the best of which is the new 187 brake horsepower Skyactiv-X. X. This is the engine that Mazda has promised will deliver diesel economy with petrol performance. Intense pressure is used to combust the fuel-air mix, like in a diesel engine, but spark plugs are used as control factors. Well, out on the road, the supercharged 2-litre motor doesn't have the low-down grunt of turbocharged rivals, but it revs all the way up to 6,500 RPM, meaning it's quite satisfying to really push it, although it never feels particularly quick. There is an optional auto box, but stick with the manual as it's an absolute gem. The shifts feel oily and mechanical with a nice short throw, meaning you often find yourself shifting down just for the fun of it. The Mazda's chassis is also excellent. It rides beautifully, it handles nicely, and it's genuinely fun to throw around. It's annoying then that it doesn't have an equally keen engine to go with it, especially when even entry-level Ford Focuses are an absolute blast to drive. The Focus is more practical too, and with a greater range of trim levels, there are more options to suit different budgets. 
It lacks the style of the Mazda, though, and the interior is nowhere near as stylish or as well made. Sadly then, the Mazda 3 misses out on the top spot in this class, and with the new Volkswagen Golf hitting now on sale, it's likely to remain a less obvious choice. We all know that manufacturers love their concepts. They enable them to show off the latest tech, reveal their vision of motoring in the future, as well as letting them boast about their research and development capabilities. All of this with a bit of PR thrown in for good measure. But the latest concept from Mercedes takes things a step further. We've seen concepts based on video games. Plenty of manufacturers have brought forward their concepts in Gran Turismo, including Mercedes. But we can't think of a concept car based on a film. Well, that has all changed with this, the Mercedes-Benz Vision AVTR, which has been developed in close collaboration with the team from the 2009 film Avatar, including the design eye of James Cameron himself. We know what you're thinking. This isn't exactly the Avatar 2 that we've all been hoping for. And we can't remember a Mercedes, or any car for that matter, among the humanoids and other creatures. But that's not to say that this is a null concept, despite its Hot Wheels appearance. For one, it has scales. The entire rear end of the AVTR is covered in 33 discrete scales. Mercedes calls them bionic flaps and says they allow the car to communicate with people around it. Not only this, but the car can move sideways or diagonally. This is thanks to special spherical wheels that can rotate on their axis, inspired by the seeds of the Tree of Souls from the 2009 blockbuster. And with a vision for the future comes Mercedes' mindfulness of sustainability. The concept is powered by graphene-based organic battery cells, while the interior is made from recycled plastics and vegan leather. Fancy materials aren't the only features luring you to the inside, though. The lack of a steering wheel is the most notable point. Since this futuristic car is theoretically autonomous, it's not needed. Instead, passengers control the vehicle through an oval-shaped controller in the centre of the cabin. Once your hand is on it, the car and the seats vibrate along with the pace of your breathing and heart rate. The chairman of Daimler, Mercedes-Benz parent company, claims this is how man and machine may merge. In support of this, the display in the AVTR can light up with 3D graphics of Pandora, taking you and your family closer to the Avatar world. On the topic of families, Mercedes have thought of those too. The central display enables parents to monitor their children in the rear seats, and these passengers will also have the luxury of educational gaming and augmented reality experiences. All the concept car weirdness aside, we think this is a great looking car. Its swooping shape is suitably streamlined and it's got the interior to match. While a merge of man and machine might take until the 22nd century, we certainly appreciate Mercedes' continued fondness for Mad Cat concepts. BMW design as of late has been bold, divisive and anything but subtle. It seems odd then that for its new full EV, the brand has, on the face of things, played it quite safe. In fact, at first glance, it looks like a regular X3. Based on the same mid-size SUV platform, this electric X3, or iX3 as it's known, looks to be a much more mainstream product than the brand's previous electric efforts, the beautiful i8 and the excellent i3. It does get a few styling tweaks, though, to help it stand out from its internal combustion counterparts. The front bumper has been smoothed over and the kidney grills have been filled in to improve the aerodynamics in the name of efficiency. At the back end, the rear bumper has been given the same smooth treatment as the front one and there are two blue plates where the exhaust pipes would normally live. 
Inside, family buyers will be pleased to learn that despite the extra batteries, cabin space remains largely unchanged. It does lose 40 litres of boot space, but there's still plenty of room for passengers. From launch later this year, there will be two trim levels to choose from. The £58,850 Premier Edition comes as standard with a panoramic sunroof, adaptive suspension and semi-autonomous capabilities, as well as the usual luxuries you'd expect to find in a BMW SUV. For an extra three grand, you can step up to the top of the range Premier Edition Pro. This adds a fancy Harmon Cadron stereo, a heads-up display and gesture control. Powering the iX3 is an 80 kilowatt hour battery with drive going to the rear wheels. It produces 282 brake horsepower and can hit 62 miles per hour from rest in under 7 seconds. The range is decent enough at 279 miles, although that won't be troubling rivals from Tesla or Jaguar. Speaking of which, this is becoming an increasingly popular corner of the market and the car to beat is this the Jaguar I-PACE. In EV terms, the Jag has been around for a while now, but it's still just as impressive as it was when we first saw it in 2018. While it isn't quite as commodious as the BMW, the Jag is a great family car with lots of cabin space and a decent boot. On the road, it feels sporty, but not uncomfortable. And while there's plenty of performance, it'll hit 0 to 62 in 4.8 seconds, keep your right foot buried, and you'll soon see the 292 mile range figure start to tumble. On the style front, the iPace still looks fantastic inside and out. By using a bespoke EV platform, Jaguar was able to bring the cockpit forwards, creating a unique design in the process. The interior, while fancy, isn't as ergonomic as the BMWs. JLR's new PIVI Pro infotainment system is better than the old one, but it can still be fiddly to use all of the touch-sensitive controls on the move. Overall, though, the Jag is still our class favourite. The iX3 is a step in the right direction for BMW, though, and a statement of intent for more EVs to come. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out a performance SUV from Dodge, the Durango SRT.